Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first ever Theology Thursdays with Pastor Kevin, in which I give you a five-minute snapshot into some deeper theological topics that are going around in the world around us or questions people are asking. Today's edition is brought to you by Northwest Nazarene University, who has zero idea that they have sponsored this. And the only reason I, they're a sponsor of this is because this is like a 10-year-old water bottle whose lid I lost a long time ago. Uh, but hey, it sits on my desk of my pastor's study and I sip water out of it while I write good theology. Just kidding, I don't write good theology. I'm not even sure what I write is theology. I write sermons. Uh, they're barely even that. And so, but I'll be sipping out of this water bottle while I talk to you a little bit about lament. Lament is our theme for the day. Uh, perhaps you've heard that word floating around the interwebs and uh, your social circles and people have talked about it. Uh, lament is not something that particularly the Protestant, North American, particularly evangelicals have done well. We're typically a celebratory bunch and a positive thinking bunch. Uh, that both comes from our theology and from the greater American culture as a whole. We're industrious, can-do, positive people. But in recent years, lament has taken a front seat again. It's kind of moved up in the proverbial van of topics. It's moved up towards the front or towards the front of the bus, maybe. Uh, and it's something people are talking about more and more. Uh, most recently, N.T. Wright issued an article that was published in Christianity Today saying, now is the time for Christians to lament. We don't have much to offer the world regarding the things going on other than a spirit of lament, a spirit of sadness per se, and yet lament does not mean sadness. And this is where I think many people are going wrong with lament today as we rediscover it. Lament is not just generic, I'm sad. It's not just a generic sort of down day or feeling down or even forcing yourself to feel down. In fact, if we take lament there, we will have swung the pendulum in the opposite direction of what we're reacting against. We're reacting against a culture and a theology and an ecclesiology that was overly positive, overly sort of can-do, spirit focused energetic and optimistic to a to an extreme and if we swing out to the other extreme and say christians have an obligation to just be sad all the time we will have missed the heart of lament in fact as i was thinking about lament this week i i started thinking about a passage in the science fiction book war of the worlds uh for those of you who have maybe seen some of the television shows and movies that have been made on this they don't really have this chapter, uh, they kind of cut it out of the book, but in the original War of the Worlds, H.G. Wells had a character who was actually a Christian pastor. And as the scientist, as sort of the main character sort of traverses this war-torn uh, terrain that's been ravaged by the Martians who are invading, he meets this pastor. And the pastor is pessimistic to the extreme. The pastor has lost all faith. He's lost all hope. And, and he's sort of a bitter character. And because this pastor, this priest, this preacher is a bitter character, he does bitter things. And bitterness has come to define him in just the short few hours since the Martians invaded. He's already turned to cynicism and despair. And, and this is where I see a lot of people turning today. And then they, they sort of put the word lament over it as if to sort of baptize their despair. And yet the despair of the priest as the Martians are invading is not lament. His uh, despair is a lack of faith, a lack of trust, a lack of hope. And, and it leads to a lack of love, even though I don't want to spoil that chapter for those of you who haven't read it. It leads to actions that are the opposite of love and way more hate oriented. That is not lament. Lament is not generic whining. It's not generic complaining. It's not generic sadness. Instead, lament is sorrow in the face of God. Sorrow brought to God. Sorrow placed at the altar of God. Sorrow that is not in denial of the sorrow that is there. L lament is not forcing ourselves to cry. It's admitting that we are crying and admitting that we have things to cry about. Lament also brings with it confession. Lament is highly confessional in the Bible. Not always, and so you don't want to take that too far, but often lament comes with sort of a, man, I sort of dug my own grave here. Man, I sort of made some decisions that led me to this point. And, and yet in the confession, it doesn't then give way to despair. Instead, it gives way to hope. I dug my grave, but I know a God who will not put me in it. We dug our graves. 
And yet we know a God who even now, even in the midst of the despair, even in the midst of, of this chaos that we, we rot ourselves, we know a God who is able to heal. We know a God who is able to forgive. We know a God who is able to save. That is biblical lament. It's not the lament of despair. It's the lament of hope. It's tears uh, of hope. It's, it's bringing all that to God and saying, we goofed. Or, or maybe our society goofed, or maybe our culture goofed. And instead of being angry, we're just going to bring that sorrow to you. One of my favorite passages on lament comes from Joel chapter 2, who asks the question, Joel asks the question, who knows? Who knows whether God will turn and save us? So let's fast, let's mourn, and, and who knows? Lament asks that question. In closing, I want to give an example of, of maybe what true lament might look, might look like, but from a non-religious setting. I grew up in southern Idaho, uh, which means I spent my high school and college summers uh, river rafting. Rafting the river with trained river guides, uh, I later learned that Idaho is actually world-renowned for its whitewater rapids on the Payette River there going up Highway 55. Highway 55 is also known for the amount of cars that have crashed themselves into the whitewater rapids, which it's a lot more fun on a raft than in your car, let me tell you. Uh, people drive that highway not safely sometimes. So we went rafting on these whitewater rapids and these these wraps and these rafts with these sort of raft guides, people who had been trained to navigate the rapids. And like all such endeavors, like all such activities, um, they used to give us a safety spiel before we got in the rafts. They used to gather us all up and say, listen very carefully, we're going to teach you how not to die today. I don't think they ever said that, but that was sort of the, the idea of the thing. And they talk us through all the things, you know, life jackets must be worn. Uh, you know, don't jump out of the raft unless the guy tells you to jump out of the raft. If the guy calls this word, you know, paddle on the left. If the raft Guide calls this word, paddle on the right. If he calls this other word, paddle both sides, left and right. You know, those types of things. But the raft guides had a wonderful sense of humor, not unlike airline sort of um, uh, attendants. And they, uh, they said this. They said, oh, by the way, if we're going through some of the rapids, some of the type three, type four, even type five rapids, and you get thrown out of the boat, we hit something and you get launched, you get launched out of there and you land in the water, Go ahead and panic, they said. I kid you not, that's what they said. They said, oh, go ahead, panic. You go ahead, throw your throw your sort of fat, go ahead and just cry and scream and, and yell and sort of, you know, freak out. That's okay. You know, they, they said, even if we told you not to, chances are you're going to do it anyway. It's kind of scary to be thrown into rapids. It's a scary thing. And he said, after you finish throwing your fit, look up to us. And we'll throw you a rope and we'll haul you back in because you have a life jacket on. We know what to do. We're the experts. So throw your fit, get it out of your system, and then look to us. Biblical lament, guys, is throwing our fit, saying this isn't fun. I, this is, this, I don't know what to do. It's scary in the waters of this world. And then lament looks up to God and says, hey, can you throw us a rope? In the words of Joel the prophet, if we do that, we fast, we weep, we mourn, we pray, and we look up to God, who knows? He might just be the great guy who throws us a rope. So there's some thoughts on the men for a Theology Thursday. Tune in next time when we'll be talking about something entirely different. We'll see you then. Thanks for joining us.